fires for the last several hours. Noon Eastern time where he's made a statement to the cameras, which we haven't got our hands on yet, but the president uh, said that the president uh, said that freedom had been attacked, but freedom will be defended. And the president is in touch with his national security team. Ann Compton, ABC's Ann Compton, who covers the White House for us for many years from us, tells us that jet fighters, uh, jet fighters accompanied Air Force One and that as best we can tell, uh, the Air, Air Force One was flying at a particularly high altitude. There are no planes taking off or landing in, or taking off in the United States at the moment with the, with the exception of Air, Swan, Air Force One, though the Federal Aviation Administration says at the moment that 50 known aircraft, this is actually a few minutes old, 50 known aircraft are all in the sky uh, within approximately 50 miles of their destination. So you can feel across the country that aircraft that were in flight are beginning to settle down. They were ordered to settle down by the FAA and to land at the nearest possible airport. And so that has begun to work out. Now in, in Washington, I think Claire Shipman uh, at, the, at the White House or near it has some further information about the president. Yes, Claire. Well, that's right, Peter. What, essentially, what we've learned is what he told the pool cameras a few minutes ago, and we're hopefully going to see in just a few minutes. But he said that the he and this government have taken steps to ensure the functioning of the United States government, that the U.S. military is on high alert at home and abroad. He said he has taken all appropriate security measures to protect Americans. He says freedom itself has been attacked and freedom will be protected. And finally, he also said he will hunt down and punish those responsible for this. Again, we're hoping to see him in person, but as you mentioned, it looks as though this may be the secure place that they've decided on for, um, for the president, at least temporarily, Barksdale Air Force Base in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. I'd be really curious, Claire, and I realize how difficult it is at the moment, whether or not there's not pressure, political pressure in Washington from the members of the president's own staff and cabinet for him to, to, to show up soon. Uh, in front of the country and assure them beyond his statement that freedom has been attacked and freedom will be defended, of course, because it wasn't defended this morning. Well, I think Whether you're... the president will be seen in command in a more vigorous way. I think you're absolutely right, and I'm sure it's a delicate balance right now between the Secret Service and those who are trying to protect the president, keeping him out of sight and someplace secure, and, and his political advisors who would clearly like to see him make a statement. You saw how quickly he did it this morning, as brief as it was, and certainly a piece of tape that we're going to see in a, in a few minutes we hope um, is not is not what they would like to see the president uh, doing right now they would like to see him making something of a more formal statement but again it could be a number of hours before the president is back in Washington and prepared to, to talk to us from that forum okay thanks very much Claire we'll come back to you anytime you anytime you want and again none of us should be surprised at what's happening first of all Secret Service is a huge powerful authoritative organization which takes the, the uh, president's safety and other members of the senior political leadership with deep and profound seriousness, but they have enormous power. And so if you're talking between a senior political official and the president's secret service official of equal stature at the moment, who's going to win that argument at the moment? And this is particularly true in a situation which continues to unfold because while the devastation, the, the, uh, the, perhaps the grand or the greatest devastation has occurred in New York City tomorrow morning, it's, this morning it's also occurred in outside Washington at the, at the Pentagon and, and the, the tension is there all across the country because not only were the United Nations and various government buildings evacuated here in New York City with the Sears Tower in Chicago, the tallest skyscrapers in Boston and Cleveland and Minneapolis and the Space Needle in Seattle. So the, uh, the psychological effect on people in the country is huge. It may indeed be settling down after several hours, but the president and his response to this is also part of the psychological package because the country looks to the president on occasions like this to be reassuring to the nation. Some presidents do it well and some presidents don't. But ABC's Ann Compton is with the president at the moment and we have her on the telephone. Annie. Peter, it has been a frightening couple of hours for President Bush. We took off in Air Force One from Florida, where he first got word of this. And we literally, Peter, have been flying at well over 40,000 feet uh, west. The White House unable to tell us where we were headed or how long it would take. There were jet fighters off the wing just out of our sight until we landed. 
And the president has spent the time on board the aircraft talking not only to world leaders, but to the vice president, uh, to his cabinet. He even checked in with Mrs. Bush, uh, trying to get more information. We were high enough so that the Air Force was actually able to get some television signal. Uh, we don't know much about what's gone on on the ground, but he has been able to see some of it on a very fuzzy uh, television picture. We landed here at Barksdale Air Force Base. This is near Shreveport, Louisiana, at about 11.45 Eastern Time. We were not allowed to use cell phones or give you any indication of where we were until local people noticed the plane on the ground. The president has just made a statement, Peter, a very emotional one, saying that freedom has been attacked, but freedom will be defended, saying that America's military is on its highest state of alert. World leaders have been uh, assured that the U.S. will do whatever it takes to protect America and Americans. Frankly, Peter, I thought the president not only looked grim, very solemn, but his eyes looked somewhat red. Annie, let me ask you a couple of questions, if I, if, if I may. First of all, the president was on a, on a education trip, ostensibly, in Florida today. How much of the national security team was with him? Uh, this is actually a skeleton team with him on a short, uh, it was a trip that lasted only about 24 hours. He was just making his last appearance before returning to Washington. And Carl Rove, one of his senior counselors, is with him. Uh, and his press secretary, Ari Fleischer. But none of the national security apparatus, such as Condoleezza Rice, who would ordinarily travel with the president on a more substantive trip. But on Air Force One, of course, he has the full resources of communications. Uh, but he does does not have the full team with him. Well, let's talk about this for a second, because when the president took off from Florida and went immediately to 40,000 feet, and I believe actually got a fighter escort for part of the way, it reminds one a little bit of what it was like in the Cold War, because the Cold War, there was always a provision that the senior members of the government president included could in fact run the country from a command center in the sky. Is Ab that basically what's happening this morning? Absolutely. In fact, the U.S. used to have five aircraft, now Air Force One. Let me know if we're being taken out of here. Uh, we may be scrambled out of here. Okay. Are we leaving? Okay, Peter, the, we are leaving. And Where I, are you going, Annie? Peter, I have no idea. They have not told us. They have kept us. Uh, uh, we don't even know whether we'll be able to see the president or travel with him, but we are told that he's been traveling. He will continue. They are still quite worried about his own security. Off you go, and Anne, thanks very much for Thank a you. very, very full report on on the state of, and, and perhaps even a little bit of the, of the uh, mental condition of the president at, at the moment. And we cannot state it often enough. Uh, the country looks to him, and so he may have stopped at Barksdale Air Force Base in, in, in Louisiana, which is just where Arkansas and Texas and Louisiana all, all come together uh, at an Air Force Base uh, out of the way, and he may be safe at 40,000 feet in, in, in Air Force One, but before long uh, the country is going to expect him to be back in Washington to send, if not only a message, not just a message to those of us in the nation, who look to the president for some sense of political national stability, but also to the other parts of the world where these enemies of the United States, with whom we've, whom we've talked quite a lot about today, at the moment must surely think they have the United States on the run to some extent. And while the Taliban, the political leadership, military, poli political, military, religious leadership in, in Afghanistan said this morning that, that they condemned this and had nothing to do with it, and it could not have been Osama bin Laden, because he wasn't sophisticated enough to do it and had to be a country or a government, certainly. And while the chairman of the Palestinian Authority, Yasser Arafat, came out and put as much distance as they could between them and, and the Palestinian people, this active in the Palestinian people, the president needs to be on station to talk it. As does the mayor of New York, and Mayor Giuliani is with us at the moment. Mr. Mayor, can you hear me? I can, Peter. Mr. Mayor, I saw you several times on the street today, and it, it looked like you were deeply sharing the horror that all of us feel but i'd really appreciate aside from on top of your sentiments about all this give us some sense of what's going on what, what is going on now is a massive uh, rescue effort we have thousands of police officers and firefighters in all of manhattan trying to rescue as many people as we possibly can uh, there are still a lot of people there that are injured hurt dazed and we're trying to get them out and we're mobilizing all of our fire, police, and emergency resources to do that. The governor has alerted the National Guard, and they're being deployed to come and relieve us early to later this afternoon. And uh, the urban search and rescue teams are uh, coming here from 
from around the country to also assist us. But until then, which means until probably 2, 3, 4 o'clock this afternoon, our police department, our fire department, and our emergency people are being stretched to the limit. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure we've also lost a significant number of them. Now, you're, you're, you're reluctant, I assume, to put any other name attached to the casualties except significant. Do you believe it's hundreds or thousands? I, I, I really don't. I really... I really don't want to say right now, Peter, I, I think it's going to be hor a horrible number. I, I saw people jumping out of the World Trade Center. I saw some of the firefighters who I know going in, into the building. So, And we were in a building in which we were trapped for about 10, 15 minutes. Are you talking about the... You, did you go immediately to the Office of Emergency Management? No, I, I went down to the scene and we set up uh, headquarters at 75 Barclay Street, which was right there with the police commissioner, the fire commissioner, mm -hmm. the head of emergency management. And we were operating out of there when we were told that the World Trade Center was going to collapse. And it did collapse before we could actually get out of the building. So we were trapped in the building for 10, 15 minutes and finally found an exit and got out, walked north, and took a lot of people with us. My question is, the Office of Emergency Management headquarters, into which you put enormous effort for coordination in a disaster like this, has it been damaged? Is oh, it yes. still operating? It's it, gone? It, it, it's, in, uh, it's been uh, damaged. I don't know how badly. And right now, that whole area of Manhattan, including the police department, which is another area we would operate from, City Hall, is another area we would operate from, have been closed off. So we've moved to a uh, secure location in Midtown Manhattan, where we're operating city government. Is, is it fair to say, do you think, that all of your drills for dealing with terrorism and disaster are going according to plan? Or has this been of such uh, of magnitude that we've just all been caught totally off balance? Oh, there's no question we were all caught totally off balance. No, no one. No one, no one could possibly expect uh, large airplanes to crash into the, you know, the World Trade Center uh, the way this happened. I think, having said that, as I watched what the police officers and the firefighters were doing, I think they're going to save the maximum number of lives you could possibly save in a situation like this. I mean, they are, they, they, the emergency efforts that, that they've been going through over the last two, two and a half hours are uh, no, nothing short of... Uh, inspiring and when the national guard comes in to say did you say to take over or offer some relief what can the national guard do that you cannot do at a city level well at, at this point what they can do is re relieve men who are going to be exhausted physically mm -hmm. and, emo and emotionally now just if you would because i know how busy you are just give us some sense of what you thought at the time about all this i thought that uh, i would never live to see anything like this i did i didn't think any anything like this was was possible when i first arrived there I rushed down there from Midtown Manhattan, and I saw the first building that had been crashed open. And uh, when you look at it, it takes you a minute to really comprehend that it, this is actually happening. Uh, and, and to see people jumping from the top of the World Trade Center. I, mean, there, I don't think I've ever had a nightmare that's worse than this. Uh, Mr. Mayor, one last question. You said you'd, you never believed you'd live to see anything like this, and yet in the past you've been one of the leaders in in preparing for just this Absolutely. kind of thing to happen yeah but you you you, you keep uh, you prepare for the worst but you don't believe that it'll happen and this is the worst and uh, I can only say that uh, I thank God for the police department and the fire department that we have because uh, this this would be much much worse and I'm also very proud of the people of the city we evacuated lower Manhattan with literally thousands of people walked along with them and they conducted themselves really 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 well well i appreciate your time sir thank you very and much thank you very much for uh, communicating all this the mayor of new york the mayor of new york rudolph giuliani in his last term immensely popular with some not popular with others which is not relevant at the moment but because he puts his finger on on something about new york whatever you think of new york no matter where you live in the country this is a city which behaves pretty well in crisis there's a there's this public spirit here in this city you see it in blackout you see it in snowstorms this is not uh, not the city of its uh, of its um, it's not the city that we often criticize from other perspectives around the country in times of crisis. So when the mayor says he's proud of the people of New York as well as the fire department and the police, one should not be surprised. But it is fascinating and terrifying to hear what he says. You prepare for the worst, and you never believe it'll happen. And his emergency management headquarters, right down there near the trade centers, which are no longer possible to offer, this is what they put into place so that in the worst of circumstances, government would have a place.